Hello everyone, my name is Derek and welcome to the Netflix Know-How, the movie review show here to help you stop browsing and start watching. Today we're going to be taking a look at the psychological horror film The Babadook, the disturbing thriller We Need to Talk About Kevin, and the bro comedy Bad Roomies. So grab some pillows, grab a bed, and let's dive on into the Netflixverse. First up is The Babadook a thriller film written and directed by Jennifer Kent and starring Essie Davis and Noah Weissman. The Netflix synopsis reads, Sam's frequent tantrums turn sinister when a creepy children's book mysteriously appears in his room and he asks his mother, do you want to die? The correct answer to that question, of course, is no. But if you're suffering from depression, well, the answer gets a little more complicated. I bring that up because the Babadook essentially functions on two levels. On the surface, it's a well-made creature feature with a legitimately scary monster and an expertly crafted escalation of dread. But underneath that resides an insightful and often troubling look into the world of mental illness and what it's like for someone to suffer from it. So for those of you who want a spooky monster movie that's going to give you nightmares for the next week, hooray! And for those of you who want a more intense character study with deep thematic elements, also hooray! It's the best of both worlds, and the Babadook weaves both of those layers together with the precision of a handmade wicker basket. The titular monster itself is a physical representation of the mental and emotional suffering the main character is going through, and as the stress of being a single parent and widow piles up over the course of the film, the monster continually grows in strength and size until it threatens to completely consume her. Best of all, the director knows that the scariest monsters are the ones that we can't see, and she takes great care to only reveal it when it is absolutely necessary. What really impressed me the most was how the film handled the progression of the relationship between the mother and the son. What starts as a desperate and overwhelmed mother trying to rein in her hellish son slowly transforms into a vulnerable boy trying to save his unraveling mother from the demon threatening to destroy them both. On top of that, the atmosphere, the use of shadows, and the desaturated look of the film all come together to create a dreary, ominous landscape that is a perfect representation of the world viewed through the lens of depression. I loved every second of this film, and I don't really have anything bad to say about it, but I do understand that it is a bit of an atypical horror movie and it might not be the right fit for everyone. If you're coming into this expecting to see a lot of gore and jump scares and high energy monster chases, you're going to leave feeling a bit disappointed. Think of it more as a really tense dramatic film that just so happens to feature a super scary monster. With that said, this is still a genuinely frightening movie, and the fact that it delves far deeper into its themes than most in the genre sets it miles above the rest. Thumbs up. Next up is We Need to Talk About Kevin, a thriller film directed by Lynn Ramsey and starring Tilda Swinton, John C. Riley, and Ezra Miller. The Netflix synopsis reads, when a 15-year-old son's cruel streak erupts into violence, his mother wonders how much blame she deserves for his actions. We Need to Talk About Kevin is definitive proof that children are evil and no one should ever have them. Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but the Kevin in this movie certainly makes one wonder. The film takes place some time after an implied tragedy involving the main character, played by Tilda Swinton, and flashes back continually to various key moments with her family, particularly those involving the rather thankless job of raising her inexplicably hostile son, Kevin. Right away, you can tell that something is amiss, from the vandalized state of the mother's house to her seemingly self-imposed isolation from the community around her. Add to the fact that her family, all of which are prominently featured in the flashbacks, are nowhere to be seen in present day, and you have a recipe for a slow-burning sense of mystery that keeps the person firmly engaged as all of the puzzle pieces slowly fall into place. One of the more interesting aspects of Swinton's character is that she is represented as a mother who is resentful of the fact that she was thrust into motherhood, and that is something you just don't often see in films. We have a strong cultural belief that parenthood is a gift, and there is an expectation that anyone gifted with that responsibility should be brimming with joy. Of course, our media and entertainment tend to reinforce this idea, but is that always the case in reality? Well, no, I don't think so. So the fact that this film goes against the cultural norm and profiles a character who is unhappy with her role as a mother presents a great deal of intrigue. But of course, we really do need to talk about Kevin. Kevin is... well, he's a sociopath. From the very beginning, he is presented as an apathetic, antagonistic, and aggressive character, but only in his interactions with his mother. Around his father, he acts normal, and with his sister, he seems fine. But when it comes to his mother, he actively goes out of his way to provoke her. 
Of course, this leads to the mother treating him in some rather unkind manners, and this creates a bit of a vicious cycle. But I never understood Kevin's hostility with his mother from the beginning, and the film doesn't really make an attempt to explain that. There were two moments where mother and son shared a genuine connection, and interestingly enough, both of those were moments of extreme vulnerability for Kevin. Perhaps a suggestion that even those seemingly incapable of human connection are still able to experience genuine human emotion. There is also a lot of red in this movie. Whole lot of red. Red rum. I will say it is not a particularly pleasant movie, and some of the actions and themes depicted may be a little too violent and disturbing for some to handle, but I found the focus on characters who don't fit neatly into our cultural standards to be a thoroughly gripping and thought-provoking affair. Thumbs up. Finally, we have Bad Roomies, a comedy film directed by Jason Schnell and starring Patrick Renna, Tommy Savas, and Andy Monroe. The Netflix synopsis reads, Best buddies allow a mysterious, attractive woman to become their new roommate, not realizing that her presence will soon tear them hilariously apart. But not as hilariously as Lisa tears Tommy Wiseau apart! While the title certainly gives the impression that this could just be just a run-of-the-mill frat boy comedy, the film actually has a surprisingly decent start, with funny jokes, good pace, likable characters, and a setup that feels motivated and ripe for comedic exploitation later on. There's also a subtle hint that things might take a dip into the dark side, given the initially mysterious nature of the new female roommate. And so I watched, and waited, and occasionally checked the time code to see how far into the movie I was, and wondered when exactly something interesting was going to happen, because it sure seems like something interesting was going to happen when I started the thing. Sadly, Bad Roomies is a perfect example of a good concept on paper that never actually materializes into anything in practice. There are plenty of good setups that could have potentially hilarious payoffs, but the film never goes anywhere compelling with them, and the characters are stagnant and predictable the entire way through. One of the best friends has a perverted obsession with banging the new roommate, even though he has a girlfriend and claims he would never cheat on her. Spoiler alert, he does. The other best friend asserts that he would never be romantically involved with a new roommate, because that would be unethical and probably cause more trouble than it's worth. Spoiler alert, he goes for it. And the female character is such a letdown. She's set up in such a way that there's something very unorthodox about her, like she's harboring some sort of devious secrets that might turn everything on its head. But no, she's just a little kinky in the bedroom. And of course, when things inevitably go south between all three of them, it devolves into a generic run-of-the-mill game of mean-spirited pranks meant to try and get the other person to move out. Even the pranks aren't that original or funny, and that is such a huge missed opportunity. The one element that did catch me genuinely off guard was the ending, but that's because it came completely out of left field and had nothing to do with anything that had happened before it, so not for the best of reasons. I guess if you were looking for something light and raunchy that doesn't require a whole lot of thought, you might be able to get a laugh out of this. But as for me, what started as an unexpectedly strong and amusing ride quickly rolled over as a wholly disappointing and unremarkable affair. Thumbs down. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you that tune in and watch this show. That's an amazing thing for you to do. I have decided that I'm going to be uploading on Fridays, so if you want to see my content every week, uh, I will have it up on Fridays for you. That way you can watch, see if there's anything interesting you might want to check out, and then you have the whole weekend to look for it. Um, what else? I guess that's really the only announcement I have today. If you like this show, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I also have a Facebook page, so you can head over to Facebook, like and follow me on there. I'll be posting updates on there every week as well. Um, and then I have a catchphrase, I guess. So I'm gonna try it out, we'll see how it goes. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't, huh? You ready? You ready? And if you wanna know your flicks, you know where to click. Eh? Eh? Yeah, it's kinda dumb now that I say it out loud. We'll try it out, let's see. Happy hunting, guys. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>